Uh, my name is Bob Mitchell uh, with Perkies. I'm here with Jimmy Fielding. Uh, Jimmy's uh, been with Perkies for about 23 years now, so we've got a, a seasoned veteran on the call with us today. We're going to be talking about uh, eliminating battery issues uh, with using lift gates and electric uh, pallet jack. I <laughs> just messed all that up. Lift gates and electric pallet jack charging, uh, are known as our TAP system. Uh, both of those go hand in hand. We're going to be talking a little, little bit about that today. You know, Perkies has been around. Uh, we're part of a, a mission critical electronics, which is the, uh, the umbrella company that we're under. But, uh, you know, we've been around about 30 years now. Uh, Jimmy's seen most of that, uh, yep. 24 of those 30 years. But uh, we really got our start when it comes to uh, liftgate charging systems. That's where uh, uh, we kind of made our bones, if you will. So, yeah, we're... Uh, very, very, you know, as you see here, very service oriented. Uh, we're actually, Bob and I both are out in the field um, doing service right now. So do lots of training, uh, lots of product training, um, you know, multimeter training. Just we're all about about service. Yes, sir. Today we're going to be talking about lift gate charging. As I said, it's uh, one of the, one of our products that kind of left us onto the uh, on the stage, if you will. But, um, you know, why do you need a, a liftgate charging system uh, is the question that most fleets ask. Um, well, obviously, liftgate batteries um, will get reduced over the course of the day. Uh, they're going to cause you road calls. Liftgate goes down, won't go up. You're going to have to send a truck out. Um, in regards to the liftgate batteries, we want to extend that battery life. There's only so much uh, voltage in those batteries. We want to uh, continue to recharge them and thus helps the battery uh, maintain a longer life. And also helps the life of the lift gate as far as, as the motors, the solenoids, the, the better the battery shape, the better the shape of the battery, the less work the solenoids are going to do, the less work the motors are going to do in, a, in the switches. So overall system-wide, keeping those batteries topped off um, is going to be better for your lift gate batteries and your system. Yeah, absolutely. That's, and that's one of the, you know, with my experience and going out in the field with and looking at the fleets that do run lift gates it's really the first thing i look at is you know how many motors still you know uh pump motors are you going through how many solenoids are you going through switches that sort of thing because um very likely um you know the reason for those failures is, is low low voltage once that voltage gets to those components and and they don't like that so uh, that's a, a key indicator So the criteria for selecting a system, you want to find the right system for for what your applications are, um, your input options, you're using a dual pole, a single pole, seven way, whichever of those options works better for you. How many times do, does the lift gate cycle up and down during the course of a regular day? What kind of weight you guys are using uh, when you're cycling the lift gate up and down, that's going to affect that operation as well. Uh, and what kind of climate you're running in, um, you know, Cold climate means the batteries are going to have to work harder, um, and warmer climate is going to be a little bit more conducive for that. And, and the other side of it too, how many miles are you going in between uh, stops as well? If you're only doing, you know, five miles, it's going to be different than if you're doing 50 miles between stops. Is more the opportunity to charge. So our system's broken down into to what we call the brains and the brawn of the system. Uh, and as, we, as you see from the slide here, we're going to be talking a little bit about the brawn. Uh, obviously, the starter uh, and alternator and the starter batteries are up in the tractor. So in the lift gate, batteries are more towards the rear of the trailer. So that's taking a long time for the, uh, the, elect the electricity to, to go, and you're going to get a voltage drop there. So what we've done is come up with a system, uh, a DC to DC, inverter that steps up that voltage um, and, and creates that power there. So again, that incre increases the life of the battery, uh, takes takes down that downtime we're talking about, and makes your lift gate operate a little bit more efficiently. Um, and it helps in the cold weather as well. As we said, those batteries have a harder time uh, pushing that voltage. This is uh, able to kind of amp that voltage up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you need that electrical pressure, which is your voltage, um, to, you know, to get more current into those those lift gate batteries, and and that's what this the brawn of the system. Um, you know, that's it, it's it, what's called temperature compensation. Um, so when it sees those colder climates, it's going to provide that that higher voltage, that that pressure to to really push more current into those 
those lift gate batteries when they need it. So we talked about the brawn of the system. We're gonna talk about the brain of the system. Uh, one of the things that our system does uh, across all of our uh, systems is we don't wanna rob the starter batteries. Okay, if your lift gate batteries are in great shape but your truck doesn't start, that doesn't help you any. So uh, our systems come with a control module, uh, as you see based here, uh, that uh, comes to the front of the uh, tractor. And it will drop out and not charge your lift gate batteries if your starter batteries are below 12.4. So it, it's basically telling the brawn, hey, don't pull, don't suck juice out into the lift gate batteries and deplete these tractor batteries as well. And the other part of this brain system is that it also lets the driver know by indicator lights whether the liftgate batteries are in great shape or not, or if they need to be charged, or if there's a problem. So when a driver's pulling up to uh, his trailer that he's going to take, he knows that right off the bat. All right, thanks. Good explanation, Bob. So now I'm going to kind of go into um, the configurations, all the different options that you could choose from. You know, Bob mentioned in an earlier slide that um, you know your input options you got to know what your tractor has whether it only has seven way um, whether it has dual pole or the old um, you know, single pole option uh, single pole is um, we're probably all familiar that that's not the best um, option um, but because you're really just you have one um, power and um, really no dedicated ground so um, but some of your tractors may that maybe what they have, um, or you may be a leasing fleet and you have um, multiple tractors with all different types of, you know, uh, stinger cores. Um, so we, we have these multiple options for you. As you can see here, we have the Directo 1 uh, and the Directo 2, uh, which are single source charging options. Meaning what I mean by single source is you only get one option um, to pull power from the tractor. And that's through the, the stinger cord. So on the left, you see the, the direct 01 where it's dual pole only. So at that point, you, you know, if you choose this option, your tractors must all have dual poles. So uh, you got to know that. And because uh, um, you don't want to run into a scenario where you have a tractor with a single pole and you're not able to plug into that trailer uh, and properly charge lift gate batteries. Uh, the option to the right is dual pole and single pole so it gives you a little bit more flexibility uh, depending on what your tractors have um, going into the next uh, single source charging option this is some of our earlier models we still offer these today um, but they do not have the built-in you know dual pole receptacle dual pole single pole receptacle uh, we utilize a harness that ties into the existing receptacle that's already you know may already be on the trailer so you know for example and you could do this with a, a dual pole option what as well but what i'm showing here is the directo 3 um, which is you know a trailer that um, only has a seven way option you're your track you're only pulling power from the tractor through the seven way um, and then we also do you know straight truck application where you don't have a stinger cord you don't have any you know that separation from you know truck to trailer and you just tie directly into the that truck battery so lots of various options um you know kind of the difference here on the single and, and um, the single source charging is one has the built-in receptacles uh, in this model here you're relying on the existing uh, receptacles already on the trailer um, so now going into our multi-charge source, um, this is you can pick multiple sources to charge from, whether that's seven-way, you know, a combination of seven-way and dual pole, um, combination of seven-way dual pole and maybe even the reefer. Um, but this, this option gives you uh, multiple sources to pull power from. And we we're never pulling from those sources at the same time. We're always going to we kind of have an order of operations. We always pull from the the stinger cord, whether that's single pole or dual pole first, um, because that's just a much better connection. Um, it's a direct connection to that truck battery, uh, much bigger cable size. You're dealing with typically a two gauge cable. Uh, so that um, 
that path you know has a much bigger cable to go through um, so a lot less voltage drop um, so you have the you know the two options here the dual pole single pole um, or just a dual pole um, option there pretty much any way you want to go in there right yeah um, but you know, sorry I kind of got off track though back to the order operations you have the you know dual pole first the stinger whether it's dual pole or single pole um, if it doesn't see uh, that that's there um, it's going to automatically switch over to the next available source which would be the reefer um, we picked the reefer second because it has you know the reefer has a dedicated battery um, you know much better connections um, so we're going to automatically switch to that source no interaction the driver has to make um, it's just automatically going to switch to that source to pull power from and then kind of your backup you know some fleets run seven way only but you know, in this setup, your backup is going to be your seven way if you choose that option. Um, so if, you know, if you don't have a good, you know, dual pole, single pole, it's not plugged in, reefer's not running, but that tractor is coupled uh, to that trailer and the tractor's running, it's going to choose the that seven way as, a, as kind of a backup. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, you know, Again, back on the multi-char source, the, the option we've done for years um, where it doesn't have the built-in receptacle, this is our select system where you just tie into you know, either the dual pole, single pole, uh, reefer, or the, the seven way. Um, the other feature that's on um, the option where you have the built-in receptacles is an interior light controller. Um, so we have our own built-in interior light controller. Um, you can see here on that picture, you just, you know, it's a push of a button. Um, gives you an indicator of what, you know, when the lights are on, when the lights are off. Um, and how the, our interior light controller works, it works off of time and voltage. So we're kind of uh, helping you out in both areas. Um, it's all programmable on the, the faceplate um, by, you know, pressing the interior light button uh, in a sequence um, to be able to program it for timing. So you either get 15, 30, 60, or 90 minute inter intervals. Um, but what we do is when we reach that time limit, we don't want a driver to ever be stuck in a, in a trailer with the lights that, out. That, so that's fine. so we, we warn them, we give them a three minute warning. We kind of blink the lights inside the trailer and say, hey, you're, we're about to shut these lights off on you. So we do give them a warning. Um, and then the voltage set point is 12.4. So you know, whether we're pulling that power to power the interior lights off the lift gate batteries or the you know or the tractor once that reaches that 12.4 mark we're gonna again we're gonna warn the whoever's in the trailer that we're about to shut give, off give me a heads up yeah, yeah um and then that also has a feature you know that can tie into the seven way that when that tractor starts we're also going to go into a, a shutdown because we don't want to be you know drivers going down the highway with with lights on so Um, and then, you know, this whole webinar is based around, you know, charging and protecting batteries. That, that's typically our biggest issue. So solar is always an option, no matter the, no matter the application. Um, but for these applications, um, we do offer, offer solar as well. Um, you know, anywhere from 110 watts up to 330 watts for a, for a trailer application to take care of liftgate batteries. Are there again, the more we can put into a battery, less it's going to sulfate, less it's going to have issues and uh, keep the batteries, the life of the batteries longer. So we can put energy in, we're going to try and find ways to put energy in those batteries. Absolutely. It's all about opportunity charge. <clears throat> so uh, now we have a poll question, um, kind of get the audience involved here a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to start, what is the biggest issue with equipment such as lift gates, or electric pallet jacks. So your options are A, operating them, B, maintenance on you know any of the components, or C, keeping the batteries charged. So I'll give you a few seconds to, uh, to put in your answers, and we'll kind of go over that.
We're not going to give you a hard time if you get it wrong. <laughs> but we can help you out. Sure. All right, so let's go over the, the answers here. Ah, good. Everybody's on the same page then. So keeping the batteries charged, uh, that's the, the biggest challenge we all have. And that's not just with you know, this material handling equipment that we're talking about today, but really anything that we're, we deal with. That's the, the number one battle is keeping those batteries charged. And this whole webinar is based off of opportunity ways to, to help you uh, with that challenge. Speaking of opportunity charging, we're going to be talking about the benefits of electric pallet jacks. Obviously, uh, you know, as, if we, as technology moves in different directions, there are different uh, things coming about. But electric pallet jacks has been something that's been great for your drivers. It's easy for them to move heavy loads uh, from here to there. Um, it helps with your uh, expanding your driver pool. If, you, if you're having a driver having to push around a, an old style pallet jack and he has an option to go to work for a company that has an electric pallet jack that makes his life easier, it's gonna be a, a pretty easy choice for that driver. So with this technology helping, it helps drivers out, it helps drivers make informed decisions on where they wanna work as well. So expanding your driver pool and being able to load and unload more efficiently, uh, these electric pallet jacks can, can do some pretty amazing things now, uh, more so than they could 20 years ago. So uh, we have electric pallet jacks, but we also need to keep those batteries charged because they run off batteries as well. So common issues that we have with electric pallet jacks, uh, uh, as we mentioned before, batteries, probably one of the biggest things, uh, that, you know, you guys are going to have to deal with when it comes to that sort of thing. Uh, they become uh, severely discharged. Uh, people aren't charging them as well as they should. And when you don't continue to charge the batteries to a level, they start to uh, lose their power, lose their effectiveness. So becoming uh, severely discharged is a problem. Moving them from the trailer uh, in and out of the trailer to charge. A lot of times uh, you're putting a, a drivers having to move electric pallet jacks into the trailer. Then at night, go plug them in. And that's a bit of a hassle as well and time consuming as well. And that ties up uh, warehouse space. So if you have a, a dedicated area where you're charging your electric pallet jacks, you're not putting your product in there. If you're a, a soda company, uh, that could be room in the uh, on the floor of the warehouse that you could be putting more soda, keeping more stock, whatever it may be. And now you have to check your, uh, you have to charge your uh, electric pallet jacks there. So finding a way to increase warehouse space because warehouse space is expensive is one of the ideas behind why we came up with our TAPS product. Yeah. And just kind of with my experience too, and, and looking at warehouses, as you can see in this picture, it does take up a lot of space, but if that charger is humming and buzzing, they, you know, it, they must, it must be working. So um, more often than not, they're not, you know, not really checking to see, did that electric pallet jack get fully charged? So um, again, it all goes back to how do we, how can we op get that opportunity uh, charging? So as I mentioned before, we talk about uh, opportunity charging. So we have our um, TAPS product, which is trailer auxiliary power system. That is an inverter that allows uh, the, you to have a plug at the end of the truck of your, or at the end of the trailer, so they can charge as they're moving from uh, one stop to the next. So you don't have to continually take your pallet jack in and out of the trailer. You can leave the pallet jack assigned to a particular trailer, assigned to a particular driver, whatever it may be, and they can charge as they're going throughout the day. So they, you know, they make one stop, they make X amount of uh, runs in and out, then they have half hour, 45 minutes that they're charging in between those stops. They're again, keeping that battery at the at its maximum level. So it sulfates less, it, it uh, discharges less, better for the pallet jack battery um, all the way around. Cool. So yeah, we're gonna go uh, show you guys just a really short uh, video, uh, just kind of putting some animation behind this a little bit. You get tired of looking at us, so we're gonna give you a little video. <laughs> Here we go.
All right. So that brings us to our next uh, polling question. Uh, how much square footage is dedicated in your warehouse for electric pallet jack charging? So there is no right or wrong answer here. We'd like to get an idea of, of what your company's doing, how much space you have allotted to uh, electric pallet jack charging. We'll give you a few seconds to answer that, please. You don't have to be exact either. We'll give you a little fudge room. Okay. All right. We're going to look at the results. So a little variance of difference here, you know, uh, 200 to 600 feet, that's 200, 600, 200 to 600 feet of your warehouse that could be utilized for something else. Um, that's one of the reasons that this product's been really successful for us and that we've been pushing it out there a good deal. Um, again, it's, I don't know what you sell or what your fleet does, but 600 feet of warehouse space can be very valuable to you. All right, thank you for that, Bob. Uh, so now we've done some data this you see some graphs here on the, the screen here it's kind of some before and after um so it's kind of neat to see you know a setup without the the, the tap system um you can see those uh, again this is in a 24 volt scale because uh, pallet jacks um, typically are you know utilize 24 volt batteries but you can see a lot of time without the without that opportunity charging um, and again, this is uh, you know, pallet jacks in operation that that voltage is dipping below a danger level. So, so, that, so what you're saying is that red line is where you don't want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, you know, without any kind of a charging source when it's you know, on a trailer or, you know, in route to, um, to make a delivery, you know, we're dropping below that danger level. Uh, whereas you know, with a system, uh, we're keeping those batteries top, you know, at a very good state of charge. Um, and again, you know, the scenario, scenario up above here, uh, it, it's really where you end up at the end of the day and you can see kind of a trending downward. Um, if you don't get them back up to 100%, you're just stair-stepping those batteries down till, yeah, that's right. you know, till, till they're dead. And uh, so, yeah, again, finding, it, finding that way to, to keep them charged. The TAPS does a great job doing that. Um, so I'm going to kind of go into how it works. Um, it's not just some magic box that, box that just does it. Um, so kind of starting from, you know, Bob mentioned the, the inverter. Um, so we, we utilize that inverter. We convert that DC power. So we got to have an input source. Typically, um, we utilize the tractor via the dual pole circuit. Um, there are an, There is another source that we could use, and I'll talk about it here shortly, which is the liftgate batteries. Um, but utilizing the tractor dual pole circuit, we convert that DC power from the tractor to 110 volts AC, just like uh, outlets in your house, um, you know, typically the 110 volt AC, um, you know, charges electric pallet jacks from that outlet. So they, uh, you know, typically that mount, that outlet's mounted at the back of the trailer. It can be mounted anywhere in that trailer, but more often than not, you're going to have materials up front and then your pallet jacks will end up at the back. So plug them in at the back. Um, and we have, again, we're keeping a balanced system. We don't want to jeopardize your truck's ability to start, just like with our, our lift gate charging. Um, so we're only going to turn that, that inverter on when we see that tractor running. And that's a 13.2 volts. That's our threshold. So once we achieve that 13.2 volts, turn that power inverter on, now you have that 110 outlet uh, to plug your pallet jacks in. Um, again, opportunity charging. I'm probably gonna say that a hundred times throughout this webinar. Um, so this is kind of a, you know, a quick diagram of how, how it's set up. You got your 110 receptacle, that's again mounted anywhere, but typically at the back. Uh, we utilize, uh, 12 gauge GXL uh, stranded wire. Uh, your normal house wire is, is solid, but in a mobile application, 
um, you, you got lots of vibration. We use we only use stranded wire uh, to kind of give it that flexibility. Uh, we encapsulate all that in an orange liquid tight conduit, orange for high voltage. Uh, then we go over to the power inverter. We utilize a 1500 watt pure sign um, power inverter with our patented DynaBalance technology, um, which is that those voltage thresholds that I was talking about, you know, 13.2 to turn on so we know the truck's running. And then when we drop below 12.4 12 volts, we say, hey, we're, we're getting to that, that danger level. Yeah, we're gonna we're shut gonna off. This thing out, yeah. yeah. Um, and then from our input side, you have the dual pole receptacle, um, which in um, our main kit, the, the TAPS 300, we do include a dual, dual pole receptacle because we, we just don't know if, uh, you know, a trailer is going to be how already, how yeah, already going to have a dual pole receptacle. We do have kits that don't include it because we, you know, we've talked to those fleets and we know um, they already have a dual pole. So mm -hmm. there are options there, but um, so you have your dual pole and then one out cables um, that are 20 foot long that tie, you know, into that power inverter. That's what provides the, the input power to our, our tap system. So uh, kind of going over some of the configurations, uh, this, just like I was mentioned earlier, this is our traditional way of doing it through the dual pole circuit. Um, you know, pulling power from the truck batteries up to the dual pole, driver plugs in his stinger cord, starts the truck, it powers up the taps, and then uh, sends power to the 110 outlet at the back of the trailer. A straight truck application, you don't have that separation from the you know truck to trailer, so you simply just tie into the uh, the truck batteries. Uh, and we one of the things I didn't mention is we do protect that circuit. Those are big cables, and if they were to short, um, that wouldn't be good. So we do protect um, protect protect that circuit, um, and we protect it right at the batteries with a fuse cube. So there's not that um, you know, typically with the fuse holder you have a about six inches that's unprotected. Um, so we do fuse it right at the, the batteries. And then same, it runs up to the, the TAPS inverter and provides that power to the 110 outlet. Um, sorry, one thing I wanted to mention too, back on the, the straight truck, um, you know, a lot of straight trucks have lift gates too, and a lot of them don't have an auxiliary battery. so running a combination of um, taps with solar um, you know because you're, you're again you're taking power from these yeah. batteries solar is another good option to you know for that opportunity charging sure um, and, and a lot of straight truck applications too and with my experience don't necessarily have to use it for a pallet jack um, again it's a 110 outlet you can plug in you know power tools um, you know, any 110 device you can plug into compressor, it. Compressor or whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, compressor may be a little bit too much. It may overload, but oh, yeah. uh, mainly just like hand tools. Yeah. Um, I know we've dealt with a uh, a company that um, put spas together on site. So they use that for their, for their hand tools and, mm. and drills and stuff like that. So it's not limited to pallet jack charging. Um, so this is a tricky scenario, um, you know, very easy to set up, but connecting to the liftgate battery, utilizing the liftgate batteries as a power source to power the power inverter. Um, liftgates typically don't need any help discharging. Uh, those liftgates pull a lot of current, especially when you're adding more weight. Um, so we gotta be very careful uh, if you wanna uh, configure it this way, uh, I suggest consulting with a you know, Perky's representative to make sure you set it up properly, um, combine it with a, you know, a Perky's liftgate charging system, um, and even maybe Perky's liftgate charging system and you know, traditional dual pole cables in parallel and even some solar. Um, again, we're never going to jeopardize those liftgate batteries because we have that 12.4 uh, shutoff but you may also never get the full use out of the, the tap system because it's go, 
you know, you run, run in the gate, and it's always, you know, yeah, you yeah, run in the right. gate, you're always dropping it below that threshold. So, um, so just be care, very careful when you're, when you, uh, and Jim, just to explain that logic a little more, the, I just had a customer asking me about this, that uh, the liftgate system, we have it prioritized. The starter batteries of the truck are the, are the main priority. Liftgate's kind of the second priority. And then the tap system's the third priority. And we have yep. them set up in series so that we're not going to rob anything from the truck or from the liftgates just for the tap system. Um, that's the, the brain, again, yep. of the system that we have. Yep, that DynaBalance technology, keeping everything balanced. Yep but you still want to get the full use out of your taps as well. Sure. Um, and why would you want to run taps off the liftgate batteries? Uh, a lot of fleets want that flexibility and don't want to have to rely on the truck to be coupled. So your only source of power is liftgate batteries yeah. at that point. Um, I kind of already went over all of this, but again, just, um, just be, I just want to make sure everybody's cautious of that and, you know, be best to consult with a, a Perky's representative because um, you're very likely going to need another uh, charging source for those lithium batteries if you want to pull power for taps. But these systems are set up, designed to help each other out, to complement each other. So they do make a very good coupling yep. uh, for each other uh, to make sure that those that power is maximized. Um, so real quickly, how it works off the liftgate batteries, really the same. Uh, converts that DC power from the liftgate batteries to 110. Um, so you can plug your pallet jacks in. Only charges when the liftgate batteries are being charged by multiple sources. Again, we have that same turn on threshold of 13.2. So if your liftgate batteries never get to 13.2, um, then the tap system's never gonna turn on. Yeah. So. Um, Again, you're likely going to have to combine it with another charging system. Yeah, with a good 13.2 uh, thir come from the tractor, lift gates run at 13.2, and then your taps run at 13.2, and everybody's happy. Yep, exactly. So another poll question for the group. Uh, how many times have you had a service call on electric pallet jack due to dead batteries? We have uh, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, or 10 plus. Give you a few seconds to answer that. Hopefully the answer is zero, but I have a feeling real world is not the case. All right, we'll look at the results. Five to 10. Um, so yeah, it sounds like you know, the opportunity charging would yeah. be uh, a, a great benefit. So. I mean, you see numbers like that, you just equate that to money. Yeah, you know, it just means somebody <laughs> costs the company money to send somebody out to get that fixed. The driver got upset, uh, having to load or unload, and his, his pallet jack didn't work. Uh, it's a big, it's a problem. And those of you that use electric pallet jacks know that when those batteries are dead there's really no move in that pallet jack. So um, it becomes a real big hassle when, when you have to uh, deal with dead batteries. So we're gonna talk about features and indicators. And one of the things Perky's does uh, really well is our indicator lights to let uh, people know, drivers know, uh, whoever's looking at the equipment that things are, things are working. Uh, Jimmy discussed a lot of, of the, the features there, but we'll kind of delve into that a little bit more. So the dual nose box trailer application, which he, uh, Jimmy mentioned that we'll uh, include in that, unless you already have a dual nose box as, as part of the kit. Um, you guys have seen these nose boxes before. It's made of the, re the reinforced nylon, so it's a, it's a tough box. Uh, not to be used as a, as a step sometimes, but uh, it's, it has been in, in past, but uh, it, it can withstand a, a good deal of abuse as far as that goes. Uh, never want to abuse it, but uh, it, it can take its robust and long lasting and uh, it holds up to the weather. Um, salt intrusion and uh, road salt intrusion, that sort of thing, it's gonna be able to uh, withstand that. 
So these are the uh, AC receptacle, re receptacle housings uh, that we have that you can kind of choose from however you want to do it. Um, of course, again, it's made of that reinforced nylon. It's made for durability. If you're loading pallet jacks in and out, you're going to bump uh, some of these things and you can have it kind of raised as you see the one there that's raised. Uh, so as you, as you put the, the, uh, the socket in there, uh, is, that the right, is that the right term socket? Uh, Receptacle. Yeah. Recept yeah. So you're putting that in there. It's, it, it takes a hit or two. It's, it's still going to hold up. It's not going to ruin anything. And then of course you can have it flush mounted as well. Uh, dry van receptacle uh, is kind of beveled at the edges and um, you know it's also have receptacle for uh, reefer trailers um, and they also have a, uh, a LED indicator so that you know that you have power there so on the receptacle itself there's a little green LED uh, that uh, is resettable as well so the system indicators um, just like with uh, our other systems, we have indicator lights letting you know whether it's running. A, a solid green means it is charging. It is up to full power. It's working. Um, you know, and a blinking green means it's at the state of charge. It's not currently charging, but it is uh, at a state of charge where it needs to be. Um, and then we have fault indicators, whether it be orange solid or an orange blink. Uh, as you can read from what they're, what the status is, um, you know, like an orange solid is it's under voltage. So we need to maybe look at where uh, our source is and find out why that's under voltage or an orange blink, uh, we're at over voltage. Um, and of course they, they have a yellow and a yellow blink, um, yellow solid being that we're over power and a yellow blink meaning that we're uh, over temperature. So we wanna be sure we're uh, cautious of the temperature side too. Um, and then a the yellow, uh, any, any sort of fault we wanna contact our service department kind of talked to us about what we could do to, to work through that. We've got a very, Jimmy mentioned this at the, at the front of the uh, webinar, we've got a very service oriented company, got guys in the office that can help you out, uh, that will walk you through each step, go through the connections. Uh, our warranty people are great that way. So talking about mounting locations, uh, obviously you can mount wherever you like to with the, with the taps. Uh, the TAPS does come in a, uh, the inverter is encased in a weatherproof box that you that can mount up under the trailer. Uh, that's kind of where we suggest that box to be, but it, it's not going to get any salt intrusion there. It is tight. Um, and then we have a stainless steel IP66 rated enclosure that, that that's what I was just speaking of, that, that protects the inverter from all the elements. Um, you can put that inside or outside the trailer, but mostly I think this get mounted underneath the trailer, correct? Uh, it's kind of half, maybe half and half, maybe a little bit more on the oh. underside. But okay. uh, um, we may redesigned this a while back to be able to be mounted underneath due to the fact that it makes it easier for the install. Um, you don't have uh, kind of one of the biggest issues is routing cables on the inside of the trailer um, and you running pallet jacks into those cables. So, yeah. And if your inverter's in there, too, it's going to take some hits as well yeah. under the trailer. Not nearly as much. Yeah. Just covering the TAPS installation. So we're talking about mounting the TAPS enclosure as a suitable location, uh, just as we mentioned, whether it be straight truck or trailer, uh, as Jimmy just mentioned, you gotta kind of route those cables, um, making sure that they're uh, protected from getting snagged or, or picked up, but uh, we do provide all the straps and uh, receptacles needed for wherever you wanna mount that, whether it be inside or outside. Um, you know, attach the AC wires to the terminal strip inside the, the TAPS enclosure. Um, very easy to, uh, to understand and, and we uh, provide a, a number of instructions as well to help you out with that. And then as far as the, the receptacle goes, uh, wherever you want to run it, whether it be the front or the back, but again, we see mostly in the back because that's where your pallet jack is going to be. Uh, no reason to put it in the front, but you know, however you guys want to do it. Uh, then you route the DC cables to the dual pole uh, to the front of the trailer. So why should fleets be interested? Uh, again, really, I'm going to say it again, opportunity charging. Um, reduce the depth of discharge of those of those pallet jack batteries. Uh, longer run times. Um, you know, when that 
that. Like I mentioned earlier, when that battery's dead, you're not moving that pallet jack. It's, it just doesn't move. Um, so you're going to have half of your drivers. Um, you know, it gives you more design options for pallet jacks, smaller battery packs, extended warranty. Um, and then a huge one is saving that warehouse space. Um, but yeah, great way to, to keep those, keep everybody happy. Batteries charged, drivers happy, um, and more. And a shrinking driving pool, you definitely want to keep your drivers happy. As Absolutely. Far as goes. I'm sure we've all run into that with these fleets. So we're going to go into uh, uh, questions and answers. Um, appreciate everybody staying on for this webinar. Um, we do have one question that popped up. Uh, can the TAPS run a small refrigerator? Um, the answer is more than likely yes. Um, you know, it depends on the, the specifications of that refrigerator. Um, but we also do power this, you know, same power inverters for uh, sleeper cabs, and they're always running you know, refrigerators, all the creature comforts. So, um, yes, it um, it should. Um, you know, always look at the. Anytime we get this question, we always ask for the specs of the refrigerator. But typically, you know. Most all refrigerators, it's gonna, it's gonna power it. There's not a lot of draw there. Yeah, it, it's really with those type devices, it's the, uh, it's the turn on, the surge mm -hmm. uh, when you're first turning that on, and uh, we have a high surge on on these power inverters. Yeah, good question. So we'll give it a little bit longer. See if we have any more questions pop up. Kind of to add to the, the refrigerator deal, you know, we've got, um, I've heard of fleets running, uh, you know, medical beds or whatever, trying to, you know, medical beds or, you know, certain devices, you know, where they want to power them up before making, you know, delivering them to the customer. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there's lots of devices that it will power up aside from just you know, plugging in your pallet jacks and keeping them charged. Send us, send us your questions. If you have any more, I'll give it a few more seconds. And Undoubtedly, you'll have a question sometime later. And uh, Jimmy and I, and we have a number of other uh, reps or even our uh, home office are always available to answer these questions for you. You can always contact us. Um, again, it's part of our, our service that we provide and what we pride ourselves in doing is helping fleets uh, whatever their configuration, whatever their problem is, whatever their battery needs to, to help them keep it, keep it going. All right. So Bob and I want to thank you all for, uh, for joining us today. Um,